Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Sam Raimi just confirmed there's actually a chance that Tobey Maguire might get to make his version of Spider-Man 4. They'd have to give it a different title. But here's the thing. We actually know what most of the plot of Tobey Maguire's original Spider-Man 4 was going to be when they were still in the middle of making it. We got a ton of footage, first looks of the characters, fight scenes, and plot. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. My X-Men 97 episodes will start pretty soon. There's a brand new Spider-Man TV series called Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man that's supposed to drop later this year. Of course, I'll do episode videos for that too. Pizza time. But the big reason why Sam Raimi is talking about Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 4, his version of Spider-Man 4, because Sam Raimi was going to make it, is because of what's going on with Tom Holland's MCU Spider-Man 4 this year, and Sony trying to bring Tobey Maguire back along with Andrew Garfield for bigger roles before Avengers Secret Wars. You also probably saw recently that Thomas Hayden Church, who plays Toby's version of Sandman, who just came back during Spider-Man No Way Home, also said he was positive that they would make Toby's version of Spider-Man 4 at some point. Naturally, after that happened at a convention recently, a fan asked Sam Raimi whether or not Tobey Maguire would get to tell the story of his Spider-Man 4 movie, and he said yes, eventually. And honestly, I think if they never intended on paying that story off, Sam Raimi would have just told the fan flat out, no, like, no, it's never going to happen. Just forget about it. So the fact that Sam Raimi is saying like, oh yeah, eventually we're going to pay this off just means that at some point they will tell Tobey's story or his untold story. In the past couple of years, you've probably seen the giant dump of footage and first looks from Tobey Maguire's original version of Spider-Man 4 when they were still making it, posted by people who had been working on the movie. The reason why those people started posting all this footage of it is because they'd already finished a lot of the pre-production on the movie when it was canceled back in the day. There's like a statute of limitations out there for getting sued for revealing stuff like this. Like the people who worked on the movie were no longer worried about Sony coming after them with their snipers anymore. Sam Raimi had finished the story, they had a bunch of new suits that were made ready to go, I'll also explain what was supposed to happen in the movie as well, because we know basically what the plot was going to be, and I'll explain what's changed now because Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield have both come back as Spider-Man. Like a couple of years ago, there was zero chance that we would ever see this stuff. But the first big thing that you probably saw posted in your feeds that leaked out was John Malkovich's Vulture suit. He was going to play a version of the Vulture and they were going to say that he was called the Vulture because nothing was left of his victims except for the bones. Like that's how hardcore he was going to be during the movie. He would have still been a technology-based Vulture like MCU Michael Keaton's Vulture, but it would have been a much more organic vibe like the comic book version of the character. His daughter, get this, was going to be played by Angelina Jolie who would have also been a version of vulture during the movie. This is a small part of the final fight, like I have the entire video, but it just goes on and on, so you kind of get the idea. But what was supposed to happen with Spider-Man 4 is that it looked like they were going to lose their Uncle Ben cameos. The actor that played him wasn't going to be available for the movie and they might also have lost Kirsten Dunst and they couldn't bring back James Franco because they killed him off during Spider-Man 3. So because they didn't have Harry Osborn and they didn't have Mary Jane, they were going to introduce Felicia Hardy, Black Cat. The Vulture was going to be the main villain and he was going to lead a Sinister Six team. The Lizard, Dr. Kurt Connors from the previous Spider-Man films, was going to turn evil as the Lizard. There would be a small romance arc with Felicia Hardy's Black Cat. She would flip sides. She'd be a little bit evil, a little bit good during the movie. The Vulture would be responsible for creating Electro, so that character would happen. You can see that they reused a lot of these ideas for Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man. Like they did full-on Lizard, then they did Electro, they did a bit of a team-up in Amazing Spider-Man 2 but they were also going to do Mysterio, which they're finally doing now, but it was going to be Bruce Campbell, so it was going to be a slightly older version of Quentin Beck. I'm going to try and make it more intimate, find the heart of what made Spider-Man great originally in the comic books. I'm going to try and return to the central core of the character that I fell in love with, and in that way I'll try and make it better. 
they had done a little bit of pre-production. Those are actual storyboards from the movie. And this is a portion of the script that I'll read here. So this is only a couple pages, but it sets the background for what was going on during Spider-Man 4. So the mysterious plot of Spider-Man 4 becomes known. While I'm reading from this, I'll cobble together an edit with images from Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man film so it makes a little more sense. We open up in the sky, a feather falls to the ground, just as it does, a slew of bank robbers pour out as they look up at Spider-Man swinging down gracefully, landing in a spider-like position. He beats down the criminals as the cops arrive and the webhead swings into the alleyway. He removes his mask, revealing to us to be Peter Parker. Parker enters the Daily Bugle to reveal that JJ has been removed as editor and Adriano Toombs has taken his place, the Vulture. Toombs is a hardened, bold, and scared man who also doesn't have a sense of humor. By night, Toombs turns into the vulture and begins to rob many banks across the city. By morning, the headline spreads across the city. Quick backstory, John Malkovich was going to play the vulture in this movie, so picture John Malkovich when you're thinking of Adrian Toombs. Spider-Man begins to investigate the case with a utility belt that is equipped with a mini crime case. He yanks out a small magnifying glass and starts out over the scene of the crime, he notices the feather. He picks it up. Spider-Man swings into the ESU University at the ding of midnight, scrolling over the feather using a DNA scanner machine. Parker finds out that the DNA belongs to Adrian Toombs. The next day, Mary Jane calls Peter for lunch to meet her real father. Peter arrives at the Louvre kitchen with a suit clearly not fit for him, accompanied with a stash of roses. He drops them at the sight of her father, Adrian Toombs. Both Peter and Toombs shake hands, this being an awkward scene, we move our cut to Peter and MJ's new penthouse apartment. The two are arguing over the idea that the man can't be trusted and that in fact he is the vulture. Mary Jane leaves in anger. So they're already changing the comics quite a bit, like Adrian Toomes' vulture is not Mary Jane's father. But then in the next part of the story, Adrian Toomes winds up causing an accident at Electro Corp and creates the Max Dillon version of Electro. Then he slowly puts together his Sinister Six team, so it would have been John Malkovich leading a version of that team. The way they were going to explain the Spider-Man Black Cat romance during the events of Spider-Man 4 is that Mary Jane was going to leave Peter Parker and move to Los Angeles to become an actress. So he was going to be single, then a little bit of time goes by and he catches Felicia Hardy Black Cat committing a crime. They wind up in bed together, that begins their relationship, and then she winds up trying to help him take down the Sinister Six. I don't really know if people would have been willing to accept that love triangle with Black Cat and Mary Jane after they spent so much time developing that Mary Jane relationship and all the drama and all the weird stuff that happened during Spider-Man 3. What ended up happening though is the big third act twist is, is that Black Cat was going to secretly betray Spider-Man because Adrian Toomes had been holding her sister hostage. So it would have been this big double cross. She yanks the rug out from under him but then triple crosses the vulture later and helps Spider-Man take him down. They wind up winning by the end of the movie, but then Peter apologizes to Aunt May for all these problems he's been causing, and he finds out that Mary Jane still wants to be with him in Los Angeles. So remember in Spider-Man 2 when he threw the costume in the trash right out of the comic books, Spider-Man No More, he does the same thing off the Brooklyn Bridge. He throws the mask off the Brooklyn Bridge, then goes to Los Angeles to be with Mary Jane. This is a clip of Tobey Maguire talking about Spider-Man 4 just a couple days before they canceled the movie. They were getting ready to supposedly start shooting it in 2010, but if you remember, they wound up canceling that, rebooting the character with Andrew Garfield. So this is him just a couple days before they canceled that movie. And just doing the two pictures in between prepare you to jump back into the giant machinery of uh, doing a fourth movie? Yeah, it's it's great. And to change your perspective, is it different going in or? Well, it's always different. I mean, yeah, I it, so. w you know, each movie's different. We evolve as people, right. all of that. Um, uh, at the same time, there are certain dynamics and relationships that have continuity. You know, mm -hmm. Sam and myself, Sam Raimi, the director, and, and mm -hmm. my, we have um, a certain banter or dynamic right. that, that's fun and funny and I love collaborating with him. So there's some familiarity that I really love and mm. also I like the new and okay, how do we, how do we press this? How do yeah. we make it more exciting, more fun? How do we evolve the character and make it a, a rich story? And how do I make it interesting for myself to go mm. do something else, you know? Um, so yeah, I appreciate that too. I, I have fun with those movies, I really do.
So heartbreaking watching that if you're a big fan of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man films. The reason why that movie didn't get made is as Sam Raimi felt like they never cracked the script. They went through three different writers. So by the time it was getting ready to shoot, he told Amy Pascal, who's been their Spider-Man person producer at Sony for a long time, that he didn't want to have another Spider-Man 3 situation and make a disappointing movie. So he told Amy Pascal to go ahead and reboot the Spider-Man character like they'd already been planning to do. And that's where you get to amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield, which they announced just a little while after that. What an interesting thought that they had actually been planning on rebooting Spider-Man as far back as Spider-Man 3. So they had been developing Spider-Man 4 while they were planning on rolling out Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man. I think Sony was just waiting to see if Sam Raimi was just going to unfurl some masterpiece of Spider-Man 4. It's like, oh, okay, we'll make this instead of doing Andrew Garfield. But they wanted to have Andrew Garfield waiting in the wings just in case that didn't work out, which obviously did not. And Sam Raimi later actually reacted to Tom Holland's recasting too. He was actually surprisingly happy with the idea to take the character back to high school, do a much younger version of Spider-Man. And I'm really glad that Marvel's taking it to high school. I think that's going to be refreshing and just like my favorite of the Spider-Man comic books. And I have a lot of faith that um, they really know their stuff. The funny thing watching that, Sam Raimi already came back to do Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. So it's already come full circle with all the Easter eggs. Spider-Man came back to the MCU. Sam Raimi came back to direct more Marvel movies. The whole thing is that Tobey Maguire said when he came back, one of his big notes when they were writing all of his scenes in Spider-Man No Way Home is that they shouldn't go into too much detail about what had happened to his Spider-Man after the events of Spider-Man 3. That's why there are only a couple of light references, because now that he was back, there was a chance they could actually do some of that in a new story. They've already done the Vulture a couple times now, like Michael Keaton just came back in the Morbius movie, it's Morbin time, but there's still a ton of stuff from Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 4 that they could incorporate into a new movie, even if it's just part of some other movie that he appears in. We do know that he eventually married Mary Jane. They had a daughter. That's basically his version of Mayday Parker from the comics. And currently in his universe, he continues to act as Spider-Man saving people. His daughter sounded like she was very young, so he hasn't come close to retiring or anything like that or passing the mantle on to her. Let me know in the comments, though, which movie do you want Tobey Maguire to come back in? Sony has all kinds of crossover plans, obviously, but Avengers 6 Secret Wars in the MCU is probably pretty likely. But that was essentially what Andrew Garfield was talking about in the deleted scenes that they put in the extended edition of Spider-Man No Way Home when they released it in theaters. There was a scene of him saying, we should do this again sometime. I'll get your phone number after the big battle. We should do this again. Like, I'll hang out. It's nice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'll just grab your number at the end of the, the battle. You got it. Doing it again sometime was basically them doing it again during Avengers 6 Secret Wars. But here's the big reminder, if they do eventually pay off Tobey Maguire's story from Spider-Man 4 or like what happened to his character before he showed up in Spider-Man No Way Home, like all those missing years, it'd be more likely that they give him some kind of solo movie or another bigger movie where he's the main character and just incorporate some of that story or a version of it into the new movie with a slightly different plot. But if we hear anything else about Toby coming back before Secret Wars, of course I will cover it in a video. All my X-Men episodes will start posting in a couple weeks, so make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. We should also get a new Deadpool and Wolverine trailer pretty soon too. Just because there are so many cameos in that movie, I would not be surprised if there are some Easter eggs for Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man movies at some point during that, even if he himself is not in Deadpool and Wolverine. Like Deadpool will have his own pizza time kind of moment. Everyone click here to learn about Sony's new Sinister Six movies that they're working on right now and click here to learn about all the MCU Marvel movies that just got canceled. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.